Okay. All right. Welcome, guys. So, so to this evening, we're going to continue on the setting of the framework, and we're going to create our hooks. There are different hooks that you need to create, and I will show you. So after you've created the, uh, the project, then the next step is creating the hooks. So for that, we're going to create uh, the before feature and also before scenario, after scenario, and after feature. Not everything is required, so I'm going to focus on the only required one that we can do. And then we go in there, and we also add the Chrome driver, open Chrome driver, and quit. So today, we're going to do everything from end to end and see what we have. So let, let's start right now. Okay, I think this better. Okay, now we're going to start from the very beginning, actually. So, can you use, okay, I don't know what I'm actually sharing. One minute. Oh, okay. So now, this is Visual Studio now. We're going to start from very beginning, and we're going to create everything from, from beginning. So the first step that I, I actually said that you should do is Make sure you create new, uh, you download Visual Studio. And of course, we got Visual Studio downloaded. Then the next step is to integrate Visual Studio with your, uh, step def, uh, with your spec flow. So I've already done that. So I'm going to show that quickly for those ones that, uh, so I've already done that. So that's where you can see spec flow has already been integrated with my Visual Studio. Then we create a new project. For that, and I said you should click on test, and then we are going to be using unit test. So C, uh, C sharp, then test, unit test, and then we can say we want to do training. Training. So I want to put that in that location. 
So, and we are not going to be using Git for now. So we're going to talk about Git later. Then you click on OK. So after this, you're going to add your NuGet packages. If that finished, we're going to add our NuGet packages and we're going to add spec flow, we're going to add n unit, we're going to add n unit console, we're going to add n unit dot runner and spec flow dot n unit. We're going to add everything that are requ that's required. So hopefully this should finish right now. While we are waiting for that to finish, so um, while we are waiting for that to finish, we are going to be adding our NuGet packages. This is this is what I'm talking about. We're going to be adding our NuGet packages. We're going to be adding spec flow and you need everything here. We need to add. So I'll show you when that finishes. No, it's not it's not looking good. Could you imagine I didn't record it this <laughs> that is great. Uh, that's why I said people should not actually miss the class. I didn't record. Okay. All right. So. Okay. So now the next step now, it's your page objects. So if there's any question on this, let's address this, and then we will move to. Okay, not even page object. We we'll move to utilities. Okay. Okay. Even before then, I think there's a question that came in, as in, uh, if this is loaded. As you can see now, our explorer is showing two tests because these two are different tests. Navigating to registration page and registration of users. So those are the two t tests that we have. Let's create another step, uh, another feature for login. So we do the same thing new item uh, we're going to say login so make sure it's on featured by default it will be on feature file anyway but it's good to click on to, just to be sure so on login So I'm going to create my step definition, but using a different approach this time around. So, but this is a bit tricky. So if you're not so sure, don't use this approach. So I'm going to, that's the caveat. So if you're not so sure what you're doing, don't use this approach. But before then, let's create our feature file. So like I said, we remove that as a user. As let's say now you are registered, say registered 
user of let's say we can to reason I would like to log in so that I can use the site. So and in your giving, you're gonna be giving I navigate. As you can see now, this is now immediately white, even though it's in a different feature um, file. So it doesn't matter where your step definition is, it automatically gets it from anywhere. Even though we're going to create another step definition, put anything with the login in there. So but uh, anywhere you paste your feature file in, the, in this particular project, it will just automatically map it. Okay, when I click on login uh, link, let's see this link right now, and I so enter username and I enter password. And I click on okay button. Then um, so now, so I said I'm going to try a different approach, right? For this, so. I'm going to first create my step definition. So to create my step definition, I'm going to right click on the step definition. Right click on the step definition of folder. I'm going to say new item. So my new item is going to be now my step definition, which is that one. This is my step definition. And I'm going to call that step definition, uh, I'm going to call it Login, login steps. So as you can see, it's going to add that. Uh, so I'll open that step definition, then I should be able to explain what you can see inside the step definition. Okay, so. And you can see now, we now have another test added now. So, and if you go to the, yeah, we have another step, but we need to change that name because this is an add name. We need to change that name to something login. Okay, but as we go right now, this is the step I just created, login step. Let's go into the login step. And bear in mind, this should change. If it doesn't change, then we can rebuild our site and so that we can see if that changes. Normally, it should change to what you want. So, okay. Let's continue. I will, will look into that. So now, this is the step I just created. This is the step I just created. And you can see it's got all this inside by default. It's got all this by default, which is the similar to uh, is the step definition for that calculator uh, feature file. So that has changed now. As you can see, I didn't do anything, but it's now changed by self login to uh, to the site. So now what you need to do here is to remove all this. So that I said, if you don't know what you are doing, don't use this method. Use the other methods I've told you about. So and yeah. So you need to remove that because we don't need it. So this is what you will you'll be left with, which is fine. So you can save that one. Now you go to your login feature, then you can generate that step de definition.
you can create that so you can say right click generate okay but okay one way to do that if you do if you want to use that step again so you can you can as well say generate and put login because there's nothing we don't we don't need what what is there so even if you even if you don't know what to remove let's say you are scared of what to remove here you can use that method you can say generate step definition and click on generate when you click on generate then you click on step that should overwrite what you already have so then you are in a clean slate so you can do that so you're going to say do you want to replace it that's fine yes i want to replace it i don't care so and you say okay and you say oh it's been loaded you say yes to what that's fine so and if you go to our step now you can see that is done so even if you don't delete that what what was there before it's going to be deleted by itself but initially i wanted to delete it and copy and paste it myself but this is another way to do it so yeah now we have two features and we have three tests because three tests because we have three scenarios on this particular registration feature has got two scenarios and the login has got one scenario so you can see all of them and now let's go to the login step so the first one you have is your using classes which is automatically because we are going to be in spec flow so it's taking spec flow as a package and you're going to be using it so which is fine we are not using the system but it's okay so the next one that you have the next line is your uh, namespace which is basically like a folder structure for you so that one also is required so you want to test the you want to test each up where your folder how your folder is structured so this particular class it is stored in training project and in step definition training project and step definition training project and your folder step definition that's it so you can see from training eight training eight and then your step definition so and then the next one is your binding so if you remove this and uh, then all these steps that you have here will not actually work let's agree so another thing i want to say also here also i've removed this but it's not yet doing what it should do so if you do something and you want to refresh your system you want to refresh your application or you want to refresh your code to be sure to make sure that what you've done has got an effect you clean your solution you can right click and say clean solution clean solution should take away i'm going to show you that later will take away your bin directory and everything that you've created before and then when you now say right click again i think it's still not finished it's still cleaning cleaning started so so once that is finished you right click again and say build or you could as well just say rebuild rebuild is like doing the same thing um like clean and build that's rebuilding but in most cases i would just say clean and then build again so then click and say build so i think i'm expecting that to change to to change colors because it's no longer um, there's no binding with it but that particular line i removed is very very important so however it's still building so okay oh, that doesn't look right anyway but i think it should so but it's going to create an issue anyway so if that binding is what allows you to be able to bind this particular when to spec flow to say you are using spec flow so it's very very important and the next step that you have is your class public means this class can be seen in other classes it means public you can have private but most i would say most classes should be should be you know public anyway so public name of your class and look 
and public class, which is a keyword, and the name of your class. So we already know that this is generated automatically for us, so we don't we don't mind. But I'm just trying to explain what you are actually seeing here. Then followed by annotation. This is saying that this particular method is a when clause, and this is the clause for that when. So if you change anything inside there, it's not going to be bound again with that step that you are looking for. So it's very, very important that you leave it as it is. So it's a when clause, and this is the clause itself. So then this is the method. This method is not attributed to this particular when clause. So the name of the method does not matter. You can decide to change the method like I don't want when I click, doesn't matter. As long as it's been attributed to the right clause, that is fine. Oh, that, that, that should be fine. So, and this one is showing that, ah, in my scenario context, I've, I've got some, in my current scenario context, this particular uh, scenario is still pending. I've not written anything for it. So this was going to happen. Let's go back to our registration. Registration, yeah. So, as you can see, even the ordering of the clauses doesn't matter because initially you could say, oh, uh, the giving should be at the top. No, it doesn't matter. So, you can see these are giving clause. It doesn't matter where it is, it's going to find it anyway. And this giving is in registration step. And even though it's in registration step, we are able to use it in the login feature. Yeah. So this is still showing purple because we've not actually saved. So I think that you change to white immediately now. So why that is doing that? So we only have like 20 minutes. So, okay. So that's changed to white. We go to registration now. So that is showing that it's pending. It's pending. If you run this code, it's going to throw an exception for us because we have a pending test that we've not written, which is also good because it's following TDD approach. TDD is test-driven development, which is like test first. You're forcing to test your code first. Even though you've not written the application, the first thing you need to do is to test. And what's, why? Because one, you've not written an application and you want to test the application. <laughs> That's kind of <laughs> chicken and egg situation, isn't it? So because what you're expecting, you're expecting your application to fail first. Then once your application has failed, then you try to now make it work to pass it. So in this same con um, context also, in, in this regard, so if you run this right now, it should fail or it should not run at all. Then once you have that, then you can now tr continue from there and then fix it as, as you go. That's what is going to happen. So now that's what I've explained there. So I've explained how this, also you have the public, public in the method. Public means this particular method is now visible in order for other methods to see. And void means it's not returning anything. It's returning nothing. So if them permit during the course of this pro, uh, training in the other classes, I'm going to go through like uh, A, B, C, or C sharp, or something like that, as, as in just like a cheat, cheat sheet, to be honest, so, so that you can see uh, what you need in C sharp. But I think I will propose that you try to learn a bit about C sharp, even though I will try to make it, this particular training as simple as possible. Uh, my approach is that we follow a sequence. If you follow the sequence I've highlighted right now, even from the video, this is not, so you, it should be fine, to be honest. So um, I will try to use that sequence, then that's what, as long as you follow it, then you should be fine. So this is what we've done. We've done our three tests. The next one now is to run those tests. So there are different ways to run your test. You could run it from the scenario, right click and say run spec flow scenario, right click on that and click on run. I'm not expecting that to run because 
there's there's some pending scenario and we've not actually done anything anyway so it's going to just put an exclamation that i've got some pending step yeah like that so i see it is it's a good practice to read some of these comments to see what exactly is your test trying to do so as you can see trying to run test and test has finished but i think it's saying zero test run or something like that so okay and another thing also yeah so you can that's one way to run the test and another way to run the test is to right click yeah and click on run selected test if you want to run one And there, there's something I didn't do that, on, no, that I didn't do, something I did that I want to say is okay because someone said, what if uh, we didn't add some packages and what's going to happen in the future? I think this is where I'm going to explain this decision to you right now because I did not add uh, end unit test. So now, so for this, is saying that it's not actually finding any test, zero run at all. So basically nothing is run actually, no test. So even if you do run all tests, so that's another way to run your test, run all tests. But I'm expecting it to run anyway as three tests, but to give me an exclamation that I've got pending test. But what I'm getting here is saying that zero test is run. So even if I go right now, let's say in my login, because I can decide to say, oh, I don't want that. Comment that scenario out. So I don't want pending. I want to comment that out just to be sure that they can actually pass by, them, by themselves. So it's not going to do anything anyway. But this is just to show that so I go to the login also comment out so commenting out means that step is no longer valid it's no longer it's not going to be run so it's kind of so empty so basically I have a test that will not do anything those uh, all these tests now are not going to do I have some the tests they are not going to do anything so they're going to go boom and that's it done so Yeah, Mumi said yours shows one test. Yes, because you've added the test, the NuGet package that I have removed <laughs> anyway. So I'm going to add it right now anyway. So one minute, let's do this. So let me run it right now and see that normally the audit three should run, but because of the package that I've removed, that's not going to run. Okay, as you can see, okay, still showing, still showing zero run and yeah, so nothing happened. Yeah, so now let's try to fix it because it was a deliberate attempt, right? So one, let's go to our app config. So app config, I'm going to be, sh I'm very sure I'm using a unit as my unit provider so and I'm also using spec flow so just to confirm that now what I did not add is my end unit uh, 3 adapter isn't it so I'm going to go back and add it now how did, did I know because I had no based on experience actually so because uh, I've tried to go through one after the other and see what all these th things are doing basically but that's why for a starter to join in that's why i normally go through this step like uh procedure to be honest so that's why for people that have an issue i tell them go look at the video 
make sure you follow the step as I have done. If I right click anywhere, make sure that is the place that you right click. It's easy to miss anything and if you do miss it, it's going to be difficult for you to actually establish what you missed. So it's very, very important. And when I do things, I always also pause and show you what you should see after you've done it. So that's, that's the step I, I, have, I have taken. Now, so in my installed Nougat package, you can see I don't have the end uh, unit test adapter. So if I search for it right now, end unit. I think it's end unit three is called. End unit three test adapter. That is one I have not installed, or I did install, but I uninstalled it for this particular purpose. So then if I do that, install it. So when that finish, I will clean my build and let's see what happens. So, and yeah, so this pop-up is very, very, very important, actually. So it's telling you that Speculo has dictated some changes in, in, in the configurations, which might affect generation of your feature files. So, and now it's asking you, do you want to generate them? Yes, yes, and the answer is yes. You need to regenerate your, step, um, your feature files again. And I'll click on yes. This is showing, is just showing that my app config is me, is now being modified. I will say yes to her on that also. But if I don't open my app config, this particular pop-up will not appear. So, but I will say yes to her for that. So let's wait for that to finish. So. So that is done. Then now I can close, let me close all my screen to be honest. So you can right click, if you want to close all the screen, right click and say close all. So if there's anyone that you've not saved, you can then save it. Oh, um, okay. So disable this extension. No, I don't want to disable it. So I think this is the issue that I was having. I was not even looking at that because it's saying it's creating some unresponsiveness. So but I need I need that I need that particular uh, extension anyway. Okay. Alright, cool. So let's run clean our build, clean our solution, then after that, build it again. Build. So when you say clean, this is what it does for you. It removes every of this DLL and also every of your package that you've added. It removes everything. It removes everything and you have a clean build. So then after that, you, when you say rebuild and it puts it again. So that's what it does anyway. 
So, okay, let's run our test again. So, what is happening? Let's wait. Okay. Yeah, which is good. <laughs> uh, I actually got it panic. I thought what the issue is. Okay, as you can see, that yeah, so that is passed, right? So okay, I should love even actually to debug. So let's see. Before now, right? Before I added the um, what the, the NuGet package. So if you want to investigate what the problem is, you just right click and say debug. It will show you some error. It will actually tell you some error about the issue. So maybe we should just do that quickly. So let me remove that um, NuGet package again because this will be one of the issues that you might find. To be honest, so. And it might take you a whole day on to know what the problem is because it's not actually running. Environmental issue is, is a great one. So where's the one? Okay. Best let me search for it. And you need three. Okay. So let me remove it again. I don't want you again. There you go. Now, let's now clean. After you walk clean those, so we're going to check that. Clean. Let me bring the so you can see everything is gone. So if I now there's nothing in the debug folder on the bin debug. If you now say build, all your packages will be now will be coming back now. Yeah. So that's what it does. So it's like kind of refresh. You refresh your solution basically. You refresh your solution. So when that finished, let's see what's going to happen. We try to run it again. Okay, now because let's try to run it. I think we tried to run the login before and that was fine. So, but we've removed the test adapter and we're expecting that not to run again. So as you can see, initially, I think it's saying three tests was found. But after that, no test is now found. No test. So what you can do if you right click and say debug test, it's basically like you want to investigate what the issue is or review what the issue is. So an issue 
if there's any issue, it should bring a pop-up for you to actually tell you what the problem is in most cases. Let's see what the problem is. So we only have a few minutes left, so I'm going to finish this now. So if you have any questions, so please send your question now. So it's trying to, yeah, I see. Searching and units, but not, no, I need to, I don't need no. Yes, it's still working. If you bring a an error message. Okay. So let's see what that is. So yeah, it's now it's time to read these things. So yeah, test is skipped. So it's not kind of self-explanatory anyway, so. Okay, so it's not, but already I've been able to show you that the issue is because of that particular negate package. So let's add that. Now we go to browse again and add yeah the like test and units. Oh, that's it. Got some questions. So I'm saying my screen is too tiny. Yeah, I would I will look into the screen size later. Okay, so the test results, someone said how do you look at the test results? So let's look at, this is where you see the test results. So now let's run all these three tests now and you'll be able to see their results, whether pass or fail. Initially they did not run, but now because I have already done what I need to do, add the Nongi package that I'm missing. So then we're going to see them passing. They are passing because they are not doing anything. Okay, as you can see, all of them are passing. If you have 15 minutes, so we're going to quickly do this. So apologies, I know because we started very late because of the issue that I had. If you bear with me for 15 minutes, there's something I want to do that will make this interesting. So uh, it's not. So now we've done, we set up our environment. The next one is our utility because we still have the utility folder here and we have the page update. Next time we'll focus on the page update, but I want us to focus on the do the utilities right now. So if you have a few minutes, let's 
quickly do that. So now, if that's okay with everyone, Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. So, okay. Now, let's create our utility files. Right click. Okay, I was um, so that this is not confusing. I'm going to close this now. Okay. So now, okay. So to to create your utility folders, which is like before, after, and scenario, we already got utility folder created. So now we're going to create utility class, uh, which is your UK class. Some people may call it EPA class or whatever it's called. But this is this class will help you to run your test, what you need to do before you run your, run your test, or what you need to do after you run your test. Most of these things I am doing, I'm doing more of like practical. There will still be theory that will go through all these steps one after the other and explain why we are doing this. So this is basically like we are trying to set up what we, we, we are doing right now. So let's right click and click on add, click on new item, and then click on spec flow hooks. And you can decide to call it hooks or hooks one. Let's say it's hooks. So, and add. So, now we have these two methods created for us. Let's when you in C sharp, if you have this, uh, you can see you saw me did the same thing. This double stroke it means comment. It also means that the computer is not going to recognize what you put in there. It's kind of just information basics. So you can remove it. It doesn't mean anything. And also this one also doesn't mean anything. But if you want to read what's there, it's like at this point you need to implement. A step you need to implement the step that you run before each of your scenario. We're going to go through this in great detail later. But this anything that you want to run before your test run, you put it in this particular step. Then any step that you want to run or you want to execute after your scenario, you put it here. Okay. So now, one thing that we are sure that we would do before we start our testing is we would open a browser. Let's say Chrome browser. We we'll open a browser. And what we need to do is you can do something like Chrome. So, but now it's catching an error message. You need to. So you you see that red underline is because uh, it's showing me that there's something wrong, and it's something wrong because I have not added Chrome on this particular package into my using clause at the top. So once you see that, you click on that on that red button on that red underline and you should see or uh, over i think at this point patience is very very important if you are not seeing it so and you need to make sure you see it okay or you click on quick actions and refactor that should also bring that out for you or 
if it's not coming out and all, I think alt enter also should bring that out also so those are the different ways alt alt and enter alt and enter should bring that out for you or if you be a bit patient I think it should bring that out also for you alt enter yeah so and we take the first one using open keyway dot selenium dot chrome that should that do that okay so that should open chrome driver for you and at the end of your test you want to close that driver so you want to say driver dot quit no okay not chrome i want to say driver Okay. Now I want to go a bit further, right? Okay. Let's let's leave this for now so that I don't confuse you. Let's leave this for now. So and this is your open Chrome driver for you. And let's run this particular test. So that should bring up Chrome, as you can see, yeah. Oh, can you see that? Because I know sometimes it doesn't sh show all the screen. Okay, cool. So that is that test done. And as you can see now, it's finished. It's click on that. But the screen is still open. You don't want to be doing that for your, all your tests. You want to open that screen. And when your test has finished, you want to close it. That's what you want to do. So for you to do after scenario, and that's what I wanted to do before. The after scenario, and you want to close this particular uh, driver. So let's now say that driver dot quit. This is what you want to do. But however, so this is what it becomes very interesting, right? This driver, you we've actually uh, instantiated it inside this method. Because it's inside this method, it's not visible out of this method. It's like this is inside uh, a brother. They are all brother of this particular mother called Ook. For you to see that particular driver, you need to make sure you in, call you in. You actually declare that driver inside the class. You put the driver. You declare the driver inside the class so that then they can share it. It becomes their uh, inheritance. They, 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 they cannot share it together. But as it is right now, I was in layman town. This driver belongs to brother A. It, so brother B, as it is, cannot actually share it. Cannot actually got anything to do with it. So it is my property. And sorry, you cannot quit it. But if you want to now to make it 
for this particular brother here yeah, after scenario to be able to use it or to do something with it, you must make sure that uh, now it now belongs to their mother or their father and they can do this so that's how to just do it in a layman term anyway so what you need to do now is instead of declaring this particular driver here i'll comment this one out now so that I'll leave it as it is but then so what you need to do is you put it outside so so that they are that who have ownership of that so it's not belong to their dad but now this can now use it and say okay driver is equal to chrome driver so you know I've kind of divide uh, so you, you you now have this one now before scenario would open the browser or the driver will open the browser and the after scenario will now close it as you can see now we are not getting any error message you know because this driver now belongs to the class it's been declared in at the class level and now they can use it together uh don't worry about that i don't think there's anything wrong <laughs> so so uh, now let's run that login again we get to see i need to close this so that okay So as you can see it opens and it's closed so and the same way also you could now do for ie driver firefox driver let's say firefox now driver driver firefox let's say driver This is I'm not sure what that I think that is Internet Explorer. If I get that right, Internet Explorer driver. If I get that right. Okay, yeah, that's it. So okay, so now we have three drivers now so let's just say I, w I just want to bring that up every time the first one i have is that chrome driver we're going to use this later in in our class so is it equal to so the same way i would also bring the IE also then let's say I want to close it I want to only I will leave the IE opened so I will say driver firefox dot quit okay all right so let's run that and also i will want to mention that you if you are going to be using a browser you must make sure that browser is installed on your system 
There's not how you're going to be using Firefox driver if you have not got Firefox installed on your system. So it's very, very important to do that, to make sure you confirm that you got that installed. So that is that, yeah. So someone also asked a question that, how do I know when it fails? You can see that test has failed right now. So we need to know why it failed. So let's see, maybe this is what we're going to call it. So you click on that and you bring it up. So I'm just going to tell you what the problem is. Yeah, this is saying that yeah, the Gecko file does not exist in the current directory that I have. So that there's, I need to put the Gecko driver, install the Gecko driver and put the location here. So we talk about this next week. So this is where we are going to leave it. And yeah, so, and if, let's comment that and see whether the IE is going to run. We know that the Chrome is okay. We're going to do the Firefox next week. And let's see about the IE, whether that is also is fine. Let's run that test again with only IE Internet Explorer. Okay, all right, cool. So, the, yeah, that also is the same thing. I think that also explains on the other URL I went to before, before this time, that is saying that for Firefox and also for IE, then you need to do some other compatibility uh, uh, ways. So we're going to talk about this next week. So, um, for now, this is where we're going to stop. And then we'll do that, the other one next week. Any question? Okay, if there's no other questions, so 